Welcome to the first episode of the Hurling Debate here on Balls.ie in association with Centra, who are sponsors of the GEA All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. We'll be here every Wednesday evening up until the All-Ireland talking about the main stories. Uh, I'm Shane Stapleton. With me here is the editor of Balls.ie, Mick McCarthy, and I'm delighted to say we're joined by our special guest, the last man to manage Galway to an All-Ireland title. Uh, Cyril Farrell, welcome Cyril. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, quick reminder now you can show your support uh, for hurling by using the hashtag WeAreHurling. So Cyril, I suppose straight away to Galway, it looks like they're going to win a provincial title this year against Roscommon, but what about the hurling against Wexford? Uh, yeah, like it's, it's, it could be their year, like they've got, you know, they, have, they haven't really any hard game yet, like Dublin missing a lot of players, awfully loose not the force were before, so they've come through two easy games. Now they're up against it on Sunday against Wexford. Wexford are the new team on the block, they're everyone's team. David Fitz take them over, got them great strides up into Division 1A. Uh, beat Kilkenny twice in the year, which is hard to do. They're very confident, they have a big crowd, I expect around 50,000. I think 30 of them will be probably from, from Wexford. They won't be favourites, so the pressure isn't really on them, but there is expectancy. And I think Galway, like at this stage, they're around a good while, uh, you know, and the, the, they've kind of blended in well. And when you're around the top for a while, you get your chance to you either kind of move on or you move back. And I think this year, it's a big year for Galway. So, like, to me on Sunday, if both teams play to their potential, I think Galway should get through. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Now, the hype in Wexford is huge. As Lee Chin said after the semi-final win over uh, Kilkenny, the county goes nuts any time we're going well. But Galway, now, they, they really do look like a mean machine this year, like how Tip looked at the start of the year. But... They've lost 10 of their last 11 big finals, and I'm not counting the Connacht Championship, Leinster and Yeah, and, uh, yeah well, that's, that's very true, and that, that question mark is still there over the Galway team uh, until they win in All-Ireland. Really. That's, mm. that's the big thing. And like on Sunday, they're going to find, like, uh, they'll be man-marked. Like, uh, they'll be lads, say, on Joe Cannon or on the young Jason Flynn or, you know, uh, young uh, Conor Whelan. And if they go to the toilet, they'll be marked. That's the way Fitzgerald had them set up. They'll play with a sweeper called Shea Murphy, he'll sweep, they'll play three or four midfield. They won't have that many forwards up front early on, take them on, but like you'll have them kind of down the middle. But they will try, they'll stay in the game, make it very physical, and as the game goes on, they'll kind of grind into it. So it's very like the league game in Galway, Galway up six, seven points at half time, playing with a storm the second half. And Wexford, to be fair to them, came coming and coming and coming, like off the shoulder, short hand pass, a bit like football, carrying through a work and freeze, and in the end they won the match against against the storm in Salt Hill, which is can be which is very strong that time of the year. Galway should know what's going to come, but I think like Crow Park is very big, very spacious, and even if you saw the way Cork are playing at the moment, like their their movement of wrist is creating space with the ball, and I think Galway tried the very same thing, but they, ha- they won't admit anything like the mark they're going to get on Sunday. Yeah, Mick, what, what do you think? Joe Canning is obviously going to be man marked. Possibly by Macho Hanlon, who did a very good job on Wally Walsh in the couple of games that they played against Kilkenny. Where do you see him fitting yeah. in here? Joe, I yeah. think Joe's been having. I think he's been brilliant at like in the centre forward role so far this year. I loved him in the league final. He was like a playmaker, you know. And I think that opens up Whelan and opens up the other two lads inside as well. Just on the um, the idea of Wexford coming up though, like it, I was just thinking all day. I keep thinking at the two thousand thirteen. Leinster final where Dublin were kind of had beaten Kilkenny and we're sort of the coming team but we still sort of said right Galway we a step too far for them Galway should have won the All-Ireland the year before and we thought of them as the team to beat and Dublin kind of I think very similar to the way Wexford are coming now Well they year, also beat Kilkenny in the semi-final exactly, that year yeah, too yeah, yeah. did yeah. the work for Galway massive, massive shock like, and, and Dublin were probably at their point at exactly where Wexford are at the moment and they came and beat them as well so like, Galway I just wor- worry about that sort of that they've lost 11 out of 12 finals, you know, so like a lot of them are against Kilkenny, yeah. a lot of them are against the best ever, and a lot of them, a lot of them are going in as underdogs, but even when they've gone in as favourites and they've had that chance, they haven't always performed, you know. Well, that's true, like, and uh, that's the question mark, which you have to admit, like, that they were against Kilkenny and most teams are going to lose them, and that's, other counties won't admit it, but Kilkenny coming back to the pack is as good as a month's training or six weeks at other counties. They're not going to admit that, but deep down that's the fact. And with Tip not being as good as maybe they thought were. Now they still could come around, both these teams could come around after Saturday and next Saturday and Saturday week. But at the moment, like you have everyone thinking, God, it's our it's all Ireland's there to win this year. And that's why I'm saying like the Galway are kind of around for a while. You have the Joe Cannons, you have the David Burks, you have the Aiden Hearts, you know, you have Dahi, uh, Dahi Burke. These fellas are there. Now they have the younger lads coming through like Whelan, Flynn, the Mannins, these guys, uh, Connor Coon. They're all good hurlers. Very big, very natural hurlers. So like, to me, they have a fantastic chance because like, they see themselves like, this could be the year. And I think... You know, they have to drive on this year. If they don't drive on this year, for that group of players, I think they'll never get a better chance. Are Galway confident enough to talk about in All-Ireland at this stage? 
like you know that there is that sort of thing like this is our year we have to win yeah, or are they trying to come in that's a very good question they're trying to come in on the low and, and kind of under the radar but I kind of say to them look as, as a government stick your head up yeah. be confident you're good enough believe in yourselves and if I was a manager I'd be giving the players no chance to duck under the tapes like they put their head up and be there to be shot at really but if you're good that's the way you should be and if you believe like I was down in Kilkenny for weeks when I couldn't believe it I met a good few of the ex-players and, and kind of lads close enough to the scene. And okay, they weren't going well, but they firmly believed that they were going to beat Wexford and they firmly believed they were going to win the Ireland. But that's the thing there every year. Put on the jerseys and believe they want to win. Whereas in other counties, you're hoping. Yeah. And like uh, at this stage, go, we're long enough around to say, listen, we're big enough now, we're big men enough, get out, play our game. Okay, Wexford will try to play their game, but if we get our game going, we're good enough to win it. Hmm. People, are, like I brought up Joe Canning already and he's always the topic of conversation. I wonder, like, he's had some, he's a fantastic hurler. You know, he's probably the best sticks man we've seen, probably, possibly ever. But I just wonder, in too many big games, does he, ta- you know, take it by the scruff of the But I, I think you brought up already, like, this year since he moved centre forward. See, when you're out centre forward... He did that 2014 as well. Yeah, but he's, he's there the whole time. I watch him, he, he's going out left and right to both wings. He's mm. dipping out to midfield. And definitely he's playing more as a team player. Like, he's bringing other people... Oh, everyone's expecting him to score before. If he didn't get a goal or two, a few points, like, the game wasn't won or going playing well. Now, like, he's quite happy to play well and to distribute good mm-hmm. but okay he wants to score but it isn't in the world if he doesn't he's laying off ball more than ever you need people laying off you know like from from 40 or 50 yards out David Burke is a big anchor man midfield and Johnny Cohen has gone with him these guys Aidan Hart is having credit the, the, so far they're probably the best turn of his life now the question mark still is there but I think like uh, winning a Leinster final on Sunday if they're good enough to win I believe they are it'll kind of set them up they're, they're going the right way the other teams you have to come around other ways but like there is the question mark. I think if they, can, if they don't win on Sunday, if Wexford come out and win in fair juice, if they, if they do, if they're good enough, that's it. But it would affect Galway a lot more to lose, I think, yeah. than, to, than it would Wexford mm-hmm. at this stage. One of the big things that I saw in the galway Offaly semi-final was that Galway had the smarts to push up after, after 15 minutes because Offaly were playing two sweepers. But they did leave a lot of space in behind and Offaly could have scored three or four goals if they had a bit more hurling in them. Now the thing is, Wexford have huge pace. Aidan Nolan, Jack O'Connor, they can all carry the ball. Lee Chin, Conor McDonald, assuming he's fit, Harry Kyo. So there's an opportunity for, for Wexford there, I'd imagine, if they do push up with Sean Murphy playing a sweeper. Yeah, well, you see what will happen is, as you say, against Offaly, when God figured out to start to, to start to popping over them from outside, piles mm. from outside. So you eight backs on five, four or five or six forwards, and they were scoring from outside the whole time. Now, in the second half, when kind of six and six, it opened up a bit. Now, there's no doubt what to say about Wexford. They will keep it tight. The Sean Murphy, the sweeper, it isn't just sweeping. Like When he gets the ball, if he's on the ball, he'll be like a quarterback in, in, in American football. He'll be pinning. David will play three to four, three to four guys, not two midfield, mm. to pin a 20-yard, 30-yard pass. The guy then has either to hit it in to space where there's no one to run or carry it and hand pass it. And you'll probably find like he'll play a centre forward, maybe a lead 10 yards off the centre forward and a full forward. But only three really up front for a lot of it. And it, there'll be Galway backs will, will be, at times will have two or three. There'll be two or three them kind of mm. looking on. And yet when the ball comes, there'll be space. It's important like playing a sweeper when you do play one that everyone else marks and that only the sweeper sweeps because if everyone is doing the sweeping, you'll have extra backs back, but you'll find that the forward get the ball. Yeah. They're good at it, and they're like Galway will know what to expect. Kilkenny the second day knew what to expect. They got this perfect start, a good goal, the penalty like from uh, uh, T.J. Reid, a rocket of a shot. Wexford came back then they got the two goals within a minute or two of the second half to come back to a point and yet they kept going to the game plan the thing is they're buying into it and they're doing it the whole time now they're believing in it but I still think at the moment this moment in time that Galway are ahead of Wexford like in the, they're longer together and more, they're further down the road But Shane on that point about Wexford buying into the game plan and stuff like you were even saying that this could be the team that's best suited to, to what, Davey ha- what, what Davey's tactics are mm. more so than Clare more so than even Waterford when he was there the reason being that Sean Murphy is a real sticks man of uh, like a quality hurler for a sweeper. Keen Dillon would have been more of a stopper for Clare, I'd suggest. At the other end, then you've got a lot of ball. Like when you play fewer fewer forwards up the field, to have a ball winners like Lee Chin, Connor McDonald, Jack Guiney, yeah, all very all very good in the air. All very good in the air, and, th- and this is, I suppose, precisely the point that he had a lot of nippy fast forwards, really really good hurlers. But he's got a huge amount of ball winners, which you need when you're hitting it up to. You know, when you're playing a sweeper, extra man back, can I win the ball up front? So 
I'd suggest that this is better suited to his system than Clare was. Yeah, and you see, you'll find that he won't be popping up that far the whole time. He'll try to pin the fellas around the middle. Mm. They'll, they'll swamp the middle toward, as we say, like, and they'll pin it 20 or 30 yards, and then another one up high, or another one where it's into space, where, like, there might be two backs on a, on a forward, or even three backs, but it's a race for possession, so everyone has a chance of it. But in the air, like, you're talking about Jack Guiney coming back into it very good. Like Lee Chin is playing out of his out of his mm. skin, and, and Conor McDonald. Like what do you think Galway will do with Lee Chin? Will they will they send someone after him? Well, at the moment, like Gareth McInerney is playing centre back, and you'll probably find that they're going to pick him up with someone. You know what I mean? Mm. Or oh, they will. Yeah, he's not going to be left loose. Yeah. Like so n- would you see McInerney as the guy to follow him because like he's a huge man? Yeah. Well, I think McInerney <laughs> stays centre back. I, I, McInerney is very good under the high ball. Yeah. That's his forte, really. Like you know, you could see one of the wing backs pick him up more than McInerney because you, you need to hold the middle. I don't think they're going to. The, to me, I wouldn't believe in a hold on the middle because if they do. Is, you know, find Wexford carry the ball down there. Mac is good in the air, good man to tackle. The two wing backs, Manning and Hart, are playing very well. You'll find one of them will follow probably Mark, but if there's a loose one behind it, probably be Hart, I'd say, and Hart for Galway, he's kind of used to it as well. But like Wexford are going, Wexford kind of are setting the tempo. Like Davy likes to set, like set the pattern, and others, he sets the pace both days against Kilkenny. But the last day against Kilkenny is very noticeable. Like Porrick, uh, Porrick went to play, okay, played injured, but he moved up on, that, on, on Murphy. He did, yeah. And he missed, three, he could have got three or four points in the first half, and he got them, you see, yeah. to be a different ball yeah. than No, he played with an injured. Uh, like injured heel, I think he's back in. He's, he might be chanced the next, but he's back again, like to himself. Like it, you know, they, they did react to the to the sweeper, and because it didn't win it, the, the figure didn't work. But in actual fact, it could have worked. Like it was, it was bad shooting that it didn't work for them. Mm. You know, there's two two Katogs, I think could be um, have a huge bearing on this game. Connor Whelan, to my money at the moment, is the front runner for hurler of the year. He's got 17 points in his last three big games, and uh, Connor McDonald. In on Dahi Burke, like that's going to be a fascinating battle in the air anyway, if they are isolated on each other, yeah. Mick. Whelan for me is just a phenomenon this year. I remember when he came on the scene, it's like he was only 18, I think, wasn't he, when he was playing against Tip a couple of years ago, and he just seemed like this really gritty, hard working ball winner. And when you just see him adding, he still has all those credentials, you just see him adding that beautiful like yeah, skill and point scoring and all onto it now he looks like just an unbelievable hurler mm. yeah and he's got very he's got strong upper body strength but oh. I, I, I have a feeling a low centre of gravity is yeah, right? like he's good and he's all, he's all of them kind of twisted but I don't think the golf hours will ever have come up against anything they're going to, like they're going to meet on Sunday because they are going to be marked even when the ball isn't been there you know it's a different ball game if they let at you and they just mark it very tight even when the ball is say 80 yards away these lads will be kind of, you know, kind of used to kind of moving and kind of free spirits. Now they will be moving to try to shake off the tackles, but it's going to be intriguing stuff. Like, mm. like I, I would say the big thing, like Galway, we're always going to beat Dublin. We're always going to beat Offaly. The way they hammered Tip in the in the league final, I would say, is they won the middle eight, which meant slow ball was going into the Galway back line, which meant the likes of Dahi Burke could get up and catch it. Same with Grode McInerney, and therefore fast ball was going in and exposed the Tip back line. So I would say it's all about the middle eight again here. Yeah, and no one fits. He'll he'll crowd the middle eight mm. more than Galway. What's like. he like in a dressing room? Ah, he's a great coach. Like you know, I've been with him a good few years now. The LA team would have good stuff and bad stuff, but like he 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 would be always like he loves coaching and he loves kind of structures and game plans. He'd have two different little game plans for every half. Oh, would he? And, yeah, yeah, and it wouldn't be just one half. And like uh, in, in LIT, we'd probably be the guinea pigs. It wouldn't be good enough to do it, <laughs> but like the lads be trying to do it, and yeah. they learn like you'd find most fellas are with him. They'd like him because he'd improved their hurling a ton. Like and he's kind of infectious. He wears his heart in his sleeve. Like and you know that's that's the way he is. Like, like that's the way he is. And I have no doubt he'd be playing down the thing Sunday. All oh, no one gives it a chance, and we're only coming out. But like he's doing that all year, and they're still winning. Like he he believes they're going to win, and he is all extra believing they're going to win. That, and that's the way that's the way he operates. Will he stay on the line? Or will he go down to? Will he say well, I was saying to him like uh, he made his best moves ever by staying off up up on the up in his little box. So he, he's debating. I'd say, well, what he could do, he maybe do the first half above on the box and the second half down. But knowing him, he, he likes to be on the line. Like, yeah. but there's definitely you do get an overall view from the stand. There's no doubt about that. So we will go with predictions. <coughs> then I'm going to go with Galway myself by five or six points, Mick. I think Galway will win by four or five as well. Yeah, yeah. and sir, I'd be very happy. Look, if Galway could win by one, I'd be thrilled. If Wexford are good enough to win, we'd be the first to congratulate them. They're a great, they're a great county down there, but they're still on a roll and they'll still follow them. They still have right, and like it's 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 Galway's to lose really, and I'd imagine they'll get through. You know, that could be the story of the year, really. Um, actually, we've got um, two tickets to give away uh, for this match. Um, with thanks to Central, I know all of Wexford are looking for tickets. I'm sure a lot of people from Galway want to come down as well. If you want to have a chance of winning, just uh, tag the person that you want to bring with you to the game on uh, Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag we are hurling. And at the Centra launch last week, Lee Chin and Podge Collins uh, met with Boz.ie and spoke about the favourite game they've ever played in. 
Does anyone love hurling more than Davy Fitz? Unless you take that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, look, I suppose he's like any other man out there that just loves GEA. You know, he just, I suppose, he expresses it a little bit differently, I suppose. But uh, Jesse's a great man to get you going. And uh, yeah, exactly. He just, he just loves it with every, in every bone in his body. Favourite match you've ever played in? Myself? Yeah. Um, Jeez, I don't know. I think I when we won. I think I won my first All Ireland playing against Kilkenny in a 21s final. So I probably have right. to say that in more than, more than the All Ireland final. Itself. Um, I suppose just because the first one it was the first one it was kind of special. Do you know, but the All Ireland was obviously unbelievable, but that one was very special. Yeah, it's tough to really say. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people would go towards the stuff that they've won. Most of the times were their favourite games, best memories and stuff. But I suppose in 2014, the summer of 2014, is one that stands out in my mind as kind of where we. It's the first real boost I got with Wexford um, and just trying to make some sort of a breakthrough, I suppose, beat, beating Clare um, after a replay and beating Waterford. I suppose that was a, that was a nice year, it was a very memorable year for us, yeah. Lee had kind of quite recalled that Podge Collins had sent a, been sent off in that game for pulling on someone's face guard. That was an unbelievable occasion, actually. I was down at it, and I remember all the Wexford players going into their dressing room and singing The Gambler and seeing Shawnee O'Brien was actually, the Leinster player, was part of the backroom team for Wexford at the time as well, and it was just an amazing occasion, matched only by the win over Kilkenny recently. But, um, yeah, I was interested, Cyril, to ask you, what were you like as a hurler yourself? Oh. Very hard at club hurler. I played with Tommy Larkins, and uh, you know we'd be we'd be senior at the time, and up against senior, I was doing our best to stay up there. A lot of young lads coming through in the club. Jason Flynn would be the top player in the club at the mm -hmm. moment, like, uh, but like uh, you know, I'd be I'd got a few tries, but I was never good enough to be a county player. Were you a back or a forward? Ah, uh, small centre forward, corner forward, kind of more or less uh, be in the right place, all right, but it wouldn't be great to hit it. Like right, right. movement to be my, my <laughs> name, my in my game. Getting away from it. <laughs> <laughs> so you ended up managing the the Galway minor team, age twenty three, under twenty ones, age twenty eight, and then an All Ireland title with Galway, age thirty. Yeah, well, I suppose I was young enough at the time. Uh, yeah, I, I had a minor team in 73. A, a man by the name of his passed away, J.P. Cusick was manager, and he asked me would I coach him. I was in uh, university at the time, and we were beating a pint at him by Kilkenny in the final. And then in 78, I was coaching again under 21, and we won the All-Ireland. And we had a, another team in 79 beaten. And in 79, I was training the team, but I was in Dublin. And uh, then in 1980, I was asked would I become manager. I was in, still in Joy's in Dublin teaching. And, being kind of, you know, never, not thinking about the travelling at all, just, you know, I knew the lads, we had great potential, so I took it on from there. And that time as manager, you'd be doing the training, co you'd do the whole lot yourself. Now, I'd like that anyway, if you know what I mean, mm. like, you know, and um, went on from there, they won the All-Ireland. They were a good, very good, strong physical team. They'd been around a long time. We're kind of coming to the end of the road, really, like, and uh, I think we got to another final in 81. I was going back then again. I was still in Dublin, and when I got back down, I got teaching in St. Raven's Lock Ray, and then in the end of 84, it was very funny. Uh, well, not funny in the sense we were, were hammered by Offaly and there was no one for the job. There was no right. cues and I just said that I, they asked me to go to a meeting and I said, look, if there's anyone else who wants them, there's no problem. Like, you know, there was no takers. But I did say like that I'd need three years to try to build a team because we're starting to give them scratch and that's what we set out to do. Like, and we had a great three years together, like won some, lost some, but great bunch of players. I knew the lads coming through. I had a lot of the young fellas coming through, so kept a few, though, you know, mm. blended them in together. From both the minors and yeah, 21s, yeah. yeah, yeah. And during that time as well, I had 21s as well in training. I'd always been in a few, to, I'd have a few fellas in for nearly a few months during the league before they get a championship. People might know them, but they'd know the set up. And, like, it was a great time for Galway Hurland. It's hard to believe that they haven't won one since because mm. they've had some great players and great, great, great minor teams, great under 21 teams, you know, like, but it's, and the longer it goes on, it's hard to do. A lot of time, I think myself, maybe it's just a mental thing as well. Yeah. You know, that's that's why I hope this team are kind of stand up and not kind of say we're going to win, not hoping we're going to win, and not trying to get in on the quiet. There comes a stage if we're good enough, you can't keep saying, well, we'll we'll, we'll sneak you, we'll, we'll sneak you under the radar. To me, you have to stand up and believe in yourself like that's in confidence, and I think this team will have it. You'd have to be 94 years of age to have been alive for a, a Galway team winning an All Ireland that you weren't manager of. Is that, how does that even sound Stop, to you? Stop, for God's sake. It, make, it makes me feel very old. But I'll never forget, after winning 1980, I met an old man in Air Square about a week afterwards, and he said, that he was, no, I met him before the match, a week before, and he said, Sir, he said, I'll die happy if you win. Which is very funny. I met him about three weeks after the match. He said, you have to win another one now. So. <laughs> That's like the Lachlan when uh, Clare won the Munster title in 95, and it was all about the 63 years, 63 years, and he comes into the, uh, he comes into the dressing room like a, a week later and says, Lads, it's all for nothing if we don't beat Galway. I mean, we can't lose the goal. <laughs> yeah. Just the 81 year bracket. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So there's four qualifiers on this weekend Kilkenny, Limerick, Tip, Westmead, 
Dublin Leash, Offaly, Watford. I'd, I'd love to start off with Kilkenny. It's the most interesting game, of course. So Brian Cody last year was kind of on the line. There was a lot of question marks about him not really changing anything. Then against um, Wexford in the league semi-final, I saw Owen Larkin wrote something saying they were non-existent on the line. Then he starts Parik Walsh, who's clearly not fit. Now, he, like you said, he could have scored three points. And um, there's some people su- suggesting, is, has his time come and gone, or is he just lacking players, or is he still... I love watching his tactics. I yeah, think it's well, fascinating. Yeah, I think to be fair, like he, look, at, look at the players he's lost. You just go through them. J.J. Delaney, Jackie Turrell, mm. Tommy Welsh, Brian Hogan, uh, Michael Finley, you could say, kind of, I'd notice he's gone, but kind of around there. Uh, Henry Shefflin, Eddie Brennan, like... They're all icons, yeah. of, you know, and you're tr- you replaced them all right, but it's hard to have, you know, as good as uh, coming through. Now, this year they have a lovely minor team. Mm. They have a good, very good forwards. The under-21s this year, three years ago, they won the minor title, even though I feel Limerick could kind of rattle them this year, which you, that's down the line. They have young lads coming through, but they haven't got the calibre of, of the seniors. And then there's a few injuries, like you look at James Maher, he's nearly injured for the last, coming through, nearly injured for the last three years. Jerry Edwards just coming back again. Michael Finley not coming fully right. Like if they came back into it, Richie Hogan the last day played after spasms in his back for the three weeks before. Yeah. If they came right again, like, you know, there's still going to be a threat. Okay, everyone is saying, like, uh, when you lose, like last year, the full back line, you know, to the ball, there was so much space in front of them. But, like, like that was an exceptional tip team that played on the day. Probably they'd have beaten any team. Like, you know, a lot of other matches that like Kilkenny won against tip, when they were real good, they were very, very tight. And as you know, like, Hurling, a bounce of the ball one day can make it look good, a bounce of the ball the next day can make it look bad. And even the last day, Chris Bulger came on and you lot less saying, oh, he missed scores. Like, first of all, he was in the right place. Secondly, he was very unlucky. He could have got two or three yeah, goals. He goes, yeah. He'd be the hero. So, like, I'd expect Kilkenny to improve a ton, knowing him. He'll have them razor sharp. He got a nice draw. OK, Limerick have a lot of good young lads coming through. You know, John Kiley's there, kind of a trying new system. Uh, Paul Kinerk is there, and they're kind of in between. They're not playing the old traditional style of hip it, whip and, and shift it, which is the usual Limerick thing. Mm. They're trying to place it and play possession. They're kind of in between, haven't fully developed. You'd imagine, look, at Kilkenny should win at home. You know, that's, and I see them then going on, and the next day, okay, it could be a harder match. But if they come out of the two Saturdays, of the two round robins, like no one and fancy playing them because they're coming in from winning and they're going to be playing a team that has lost in the in the provincial championship. So they'll they'll be still very very strong, you know. Like no matter what team comes out of the round robins, they're, they're going to, they're coming from two wins. So they're like you know you'd have to say Kilkenny will be strong. Tip the same thing. Like uh, when Tip lose a match, the, all the supporters are down on them. The minute they win the match, oh, yeah. as you know, like they're the best in the world. And like the last day, like what happened the last day when they were beaten, like that Cork game. They could have been out of sight at half time, and they weren't. Cork played very well. Cork proved afterwards against Waterford. They're a common team, beautiful to look at. Lovely young hurlers, letting the ball do the work. Kind of like real Cork hurling, very wristy. But like Tip, or they're, they're going to beat Westmead. It's tough looking Westmead. Even if they got the match at home, they don't have to go down to Turles. I think Tip will go. They'll put out the strongest team. They'll try to make a statement straight away. And like everyone's forgetting about. I often remind Liam Sheely cracking jokes. Is that the all orange one when you were beaten 10 points by Cork in 2010? Like, everyone forgets about that. They were hammered below a Bark yeah. Aguirre and they won the all Ireland. When you win the all Ireland, it's all forgotten about. Then you switch to Watford. Like, they are a good side. I, I think if they put Austin Gleeson centre back, put Ty de Burke one wing, put, put uh, Dara Fyre's the other wing, that's the, they have the full back line and go. That's their six backs. You have Jamie Barron midfield. Move Mahoney midfield wing back from it, or Conor Gleeson. Leave your six forwards up front, at least five. They'll be still a force. They're off the pace to last day, but they are a good side and no one will fancy playing them. Are they going to do that, though? Because the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm so sick. Like, Austin Gleeson has got all the raw talent in the world. He won Hurler of the Year last year because he was a highlight reel. You know, and that's, I don't mean to be insulting to him, but I called him, I called him a couple of weeks ago the best five-minute hurler in the country. He drifts out of games, but they seem to just be content with saying, oh, we'll give him the free roll and let's see what happens. But, but I he, don't think that works. Yeah, but he doesn't drift out of games and he's centre-back. You see, he drifts yeah, exactly, out of games yeah, and he's okay. floating around, but he's centre-back. He's fit. Now, OK, they might say he drifts out of the middle, but you can pull him back in it. But I'm just saying to you... But he needs a position, yeah, doesn't he? But if you have Dara Fives going the way he can go, he's only back from injury. If you have if you have Austin in the middle and Ty the Burke at the other wing, and you have inside, you have the other Fives and, and you know, what you call... Uh, no, the Connors corner back. Yeah. And, and the, you know, the regular, the regular six, Jamie Barron, 
one of the best midfielders in the country. Underrated. Should Connor at least, or should Manny with him midfield, the wing back Manny. Then you have six. See, the last it was very hard. You had you had uh, Morris Shan up there in his own. You had uh, Stephen Binnett up there in his own, and they're, they're like a centre forward in soccer, up and doing all the running around after fellas. Mm-hmm. You can't unless you might get onto a lucky ball. Like Morris got a goal, but like most of the times you're chasing. Yeah. So like, but if they if they if they restructure a small bit. They're still a good hurling team and they're much better to play. They were off the pace against Cork. Cork deserved to win. But they're, they're a wounded animal and they're going to be very dangerous. I'd be very interested. Sorry to interrupt. But I'd be very right? interested because this week, like Offaly and Waterford is probably should be the least interesting game, you know, because we're looking forward to seeing Tip. But I'd be interested to see will McGrath experiment a little bit this week because they have to try something. They've been doing the same thing and they've got to a certain level. I don't think that when they're behind and struggling in the game, the system that they have can win matches. Well... And when that yeah. happens, they didn't seem to have a plan. Well, they don't have goals in yeah, but the last three you see, they didn't play the system that they used to. They left them out. They were, they were in between. Like this, it's very as you say, if you play a sweeper and fall behind, it's hard to win. But I think they're good enough, like to, you know, even to, to to play even five forwards. And the yeah. last day up front, like at least have two in the full forward line. But like uh, Derek is, is a shrewd man. Like and I've seen Austin Leeson during the winter, and I did remark he was out of shape. He wasn't as fit as he should be. We played him college matches. He wasn't himself at all. You know, and I say self, what, what should we be looking for as a player so of the year? He didn't play for 12 weeks before, as in a you senior know, like, so like, But that's, it's hard to, he was under 20, or, you know, young player of the year, hurler of the year, and like probably went to a lot of, you know, like he kind of let himself go a bit, but he's still a very, he's a brilliant, like the thing he did the last day, getting the ball back up the ground, like Gosh. he can do things. Nah, it's just, it's just to keep him fully occupied, and I think in the half back line, facing the ball, he'd be occupied the whole time. Whereas other players kind of trying to sweep, kind of play as a loose lad, you can float around and get a point. But he, he's a lot better than that. He can dominate a game. I really think he could be a top, a top centre back. Well, for Waterford to win in All Ireland, they need to sort something out, which is that in Derek McGrath's 14 games uh, in the Championship over the team, they have scored 13 goals, and Callan for Tipperary has 16 in that time. <laughs> they've scored. In their last two games against Tip, just to stick with that example, they've scored 13 points and 16 points. Where are they going to get the scores from if they're going to win in All Ireland? I'll tell you why they don't get goals either. There's a perfect example that I can't get out of But they don't have the pace up front, match. I would say. There's, yeah, but he, okay, so that, that, that's in terms of opening up defences, I completely agree. But even just in terms of not having a route one, injury time against Cork, they're five points in, but there's five minutes to go, and a big long ball came in. There was no, court, no Waterford forward closer than 30 metres to go. Hmm. They were in between the 21 and the 45, and I just don't understand what they were trying to do in that regard. Do you know what I mean? They just had no chance of a goal. And then when later on balls came in, it was Morris in the zone. Yeah, well, you see, that's what, what I'm saying. They do? Yeah, well, what they can do is go back to play at least five up front. Hmm. Definitely. At least five, minimum five. Because I think with, with, with the backs they have, you see, you play a sweeper because you're not trusting your backs. You're protecting your full back line. That's what you're doing. Now, if they trusted their backs a bit more, and, and have, have, have their six backs, what I'm saying is, I think they'll be good enough. And with Jamie Barron and whoever they like midfield, let it be Conor Lees or the other, other Mahoney guy, they're good enough. That's the eight, out, one to eight, like that's one to nine. Mm-hmm. And up front, you still have enough players. Like, you know, okay, maybe the Brick Welsh, you know, Kevin Moore might be coming to the end of their tether, but there's still another, these few months are in them. They'd still be dangerous against anyone if they played them, if they've set up kind of maybe more conventional. Mm. I think all the teams get their act together the way we're talking about we'll have some season anyway. Yeah. Well you're, you're, you're having some season it's going to yeah. come down but like they are the, the, with, with Kilkenny coming back to the pack yeah. they're all on the same level and on a given day they're all capable of beating one another. Let's face it when Kilkenny were real good they either had a run at half to, in the first 10 minutes of the first half or in the 10 minutes of the second half. That was, yeah. that was the fact mm. like, and only on that occasion were they I beat. presume we're all going for Kilkenny in, yeah. against Limerick yeah well I, I, yeah, I think so yeah, they'd have yeah. to be at home and we'll all go for Waterford to beat Offaly Tip yeah. to beat Westmead and I'd say Dublin to beat Leash now Dublin you are at a low ebb I was and the, the main reason that I'd say give Leash no chance is because Chad Wire looks like he's out Ross King captain Freetaker is out suspended Picky Maher's out and um, others, John Lennon is out and Willie Dunphy so. talk about Leash I know there's a lot of great goalies around the country and, and Owen Murphy is a great goalie for Kilkenny but the role in that for Leash is a top class. goalie doesn't get much critic as with Leash class, class. scored a free from his own 21 yeah, last he played us in the league final at LIT and he's got co- a pints from 120 yards 100, a free yeah. brilliant goalkeeper as well good fella kind of unheard of yet but will be heard of we'll just finish up with a couple of questions from the viewers at home Sarah for you okay. uh, when did you make your Sunday game debut that's from Eddie O'Donnell I don't know, it's so long ago now, it's a, I don't know, it's, I, I don't really know, it's a long time ago. Um, okay, fair enough. Who's the best, who's the wristiest hurler you've ever seen? God, I've seen a lot of good wristy hurlers, like, you know, sure, you know, all the cock forwards are lovely wristy hurlers, Joe Cooney, sure, like uh, Henry Shefflin, 
John Connolly, these guys. I couldn't say the best type, but you know, there is a craft. Like most, you see a lot of lads hitting the ball yeah. from the shoulders, but yeah. I'm talking about wrist, just the flick of the wrist, like again, they had shifted. Conor Lehan at the moment, the flick of the wrist. Jason Flynn, Bubbles the wire, yeah. these guys, and again, he's hard like a rocket. It's like a guy fishing, like fly fishing. Like if I went fly fishing, I'd, I'd probably get tangled everywhere. But like <laughs> the good guys, it's just a little flick of the wrist. They have it in their wrists. That, that's the big thing. Like all, all good hurlers have wrists, mm. you know. Um, Aidan O'Leary wants to know do you practice your punditry, and how long have you been saying bang? Bang. Just to say that with your with your uh, your canyon. No, I don't practice it. No, and I don't. I I do a lot of research in the sense I go to all the games. I'd have all the college lads because I'd be at the games. I'd know the young lads coming through. I remember Satanta coming to call them Santa Claus. Mm. I remember Henry Sheffield coming to call him the King. I saw them in like I saw Sheffield with Walter T before he was ever known. I saw Santa Claus like you know new lads coming, and like you'd, even I see the guy I saw him there under twenty one. I think in the other, on the football end of it, like this guy coming from Dublin called Howard, and he's, he's yeah. something unreal. He's the next kid on the block. So, do you, what was the greatest game you've ever seen? I'm trying to think of all Ireland between Tip and Kilkenny. 2014? 2014. Yeah. 2010? Was it 2010? The Hawkeye one was 2014. 2009, the year when Comerford, uh, when um, Chapman got the pen. Benny Dunn got sent off. Yeah, the, all the hard tech, like, was a fantastic. I met, uh, I don't want to mention his name because a rugby player coming down the steps, he thought it was fantastic. And he said, tell me, he said, sir, what's a free in Ireland? I said, when you're killed, that's not <laughs> He couldn't, he, he thought the hits were unreal. Like, get up and play on. <clears throat> and the final question is probably a sore one from Michael McGrath. Could be the hopper. Uh, do you think Galway were robbed of the three in a row with the Tony Keady affair? Asher, look at, well, you'd, you'd be thinking at the time you are because, like with lads missing, but look, it's funny. The all Irelands we won, we could have lost. And, you know, and, and the ones we lost, we could have won. And you would remember the ones you, you lose a lot more. Like, you know, yeah. okay, we're, we're dead. Like, we hadn't Tony Keady, Hopper got sent off. But, like, these things happen. As I said to Sylvie, like, uh, coming off or after the match, I said, look, at, I said, I, he said, I did not to Nicky. I said, maybe you didn't. But I said, you often committed sins before and you got away. So <laughs> you're paying for your past sins. Like, was all. So, like, yeah, that's the ebb and flow of a game. Okay, when you're in the heat, when you're in the battle, you'd want to, to, want to win it. And myself and Bevis Atten should tip and go away. <coughs> we'll be racked and fighting hard, but we'll be the best of friends since, like, or even during the game. Could be turning now again. Of course, they're robbed. The, yeah. the t- <laughs> just to let everyone know that the ticket winners are Robert Glynn, who's bringing Mary Broderick with him. So that's all for the episode one of the Hurling Debate. We'll be back next week. Thanks very much, Cyril, and thanks very much, Mick. All the best. <laughs>